Hi there, everyone, and welcome to The Daily Gardener, and thank you for listening. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's January 26th. Today, we celebrate the Russian botanist who sought to end world hunger and created a seed bank. We'll also learn about a landscape architect known for her delicate illustrations and her love of realistic sculpture. We'll hear some thoughts on growing bulbs in pots by one of my favorite gardeners. And we grow that garden library today with a book that proves anyone can draw botanical illustrations, even me. And then we'll wrap things up with National Seed Swap Day, the pandemic way. Now, before we get to all of that, I just want to take a second to ask you a favor. I know I've been asking all week but I really hope you can help me out. If you have some time, head on over to Podchaser and leave a review for the show. I have a goal of getting 50 reviews for the podcast. That's my goal for 2021. And I hope I can get it done and then we don't have to talk about this anymore. So I just want to say really quick, if you get a chance to do it also, I'll give you a shout out on the show and Big, big thanks from me, from my heart to yours. So really, really appreciate that. And then next, I want to make sure that you know about the Daily Gardener Friday newsletter. This is a little email that I send out every single Friday. It's like a little garden letter from me to you. It'll show up in your email and it's got all kinds of good things in there for you. You'll see pictures of my own home and garden. And you'll get an extra dose of botanical history and literature to get you through the weekend, in addition to garden inspiration, tons of ideas, and reminders and to-dos. So just head on over to the website for the show, thedailygardener.org, and sign up for the free Friday newsletter today. Here's today's curated article. Today's post is from Better Homes and Gardens. It's an oldie but goodie. It's one of their most popular posts, and it's called Five Front Yard Landscaping Secrets. And I know we're still in January. It's the end of the month, but I'm telling you, in a few short months, these projects are going to get underway. So it's a good time to start thinking about what you want to do in your front yard. Now, I'm going to give you a quick overview of these five front yard landscaping secrets. And then if you want to read the gory details for yourself, along with some really fantastic pictures, you can do that. So here are the quick tips. Number one, curve your walkway. If you're putting in a new walkway, make sure it's not a straight line to your front door. Adding a curve makes it much more welcoming and inviting. Second, repeat plants. This will help give your space cohesiveness. And the image that they show to illustrate this point is completely spot on. So check that out if you're not sure how this looks when it's fully executed. Tip number three is to size correctly. And here what we're talking about is not to have this teeny tiny inappropriately sized garden next to a mammoth house. And I love the fact that they get very specific here about their tip. They say planting beds should span at least half the width of the house because then you give the illusion of your garden wrapping around the entire perimeter of your home, even if it doesn't do that. So make sure that your garden beds are wide enough that they extend past the corner of the house. Tip number four is to fill your empty spaces. And here they're talking about maximizing every inch of your property. And tip number five, very timely, already happening for most people, is to incorporate veggies and herbs. Especially during the pandemic, I think so many people who in the past were maybe purely ornamental growers are now thinking about incorporating vegetables and herbs as they try to get a little bit more control over providing food for their family. 
Now, if you would like to read these five front yard landscaping secrets in depth for yourself, all you need to do is head on over to the search in the Facebook group for the show and type in the word secret and this post will pop right up. And if you're not a member of the Facebook group, it's super easy to join. There's really nothing to it. All you need to do the next time you're on Facebook, just search for Daily Gardener Community, where you'd search for a friend and request to join. I'd love to meet you in the group. Here's today's brevities. Today is the anniversary of the tragic death of the Russian botanist and plant geneticist Nikolai Vavilov, who died on this day, January 26th in 1943. Regarded as one of the giants of plant science, Nikolai established over 400 research institutes, and he brought Russian plant explorers on expeditions to more than 50 countries around the globe. Worried about genetic erosion and destruction, Nikolai marshaled his resources to preserve the genetic diversity of plants at every turn. To that end, Nikolai hoped that seed banking and his St. Petersburg seed vault would prove invaluable. The goal of ending hunger is what drove Nikolai, and to that end, he worked to collect specimens and run experiments in order to increase crop yields. After he concluded that genetic diversity was the key to his mission, Nikolai realized that most of the world's agriculture came from eight specific regions, places around the world with ancient roots where plants were first cultivated. Nikolai got caught up in the politics of communism when a fanatical Soviet agronomist and geneticist, Trefim Lysenko, denounced Nikolai's work as anti-communist. After being arrested in 1940, Nikolai was sent to a concentration camp at Saratov, where he eventually, ironically, died of starvation on this day in 1943. He was 55 years old. Meanwhile, Nikolai's loyal team of seed collectors also experienced starvation, and some starved to death as they held up in the Russian seed bank that Nikolai had started. Despite being surrounded by many edible seeds, these valiant botanists successfully protected seeds from all over the world during the 900-day siege of St. Petersburg by German and Finnish forces. Today, this seed gene bank is known as the Vavilov Institute of Plant Genetic Resources. And today is the birthday of the Connecticut landscape architect, Eloise Ray, who was born on this day, January 26th, 1905. In Ruth Harley's book, Pest Proofing Your Garden, we get a little glimpse into Eloise's approach to gardening. Ruth wrote, Eloise confesses, that she long ago gave up her battle with the local groundhog. Over the years, she determined which plants appeal to him. Now she limits her crops to the plants the groundhog doesn't eat. Tomatoes, eggplants, red and green peppers, chives, all kinds of onions, and perhaps parsley. As a landscape architect, Eloise often worked with her husband, Joe Ray, who was also a landscape architect. Eloise was a marvelous artist, and she was known for her delicate illustrations, and she was exceptionally fond of realistic sculpture. 
Eloise is remembered through her gardens and estate work throughout Fairfield County in Connecticut. And in 1978, the New York Times featured an interview with the 60-year-old Eloise at her Westport home. Eloise reflected on her career, and I thought you would love to hear what she had to say about what it was like for her starting out. I started in the heyday of the late 1920s when we would put in gatehouses, decorative brick walls, dramatic driveways, servants' driveways, formal gardens, walks, greenhouses, and shrubs designed for intricate topiary. And get this, she said, we would estimate the need for at least eight full-time gardeners for most of our estates. In unearthed words, today's words are from Catherine White, the great gardener and garden writer, from her book, Onward and Upward in the Garden. I shall never desert the bulbs, though, and last winter, I think I got more pleasure from a pot of February gold daffodils than from anything else I raised, unless it was my pot of freesias. February gold, which is a medium-small, all-yellow narcissus of the cyclamen type, for me proved to be January gold, since it opened its first flowers on New Year's Day. That was the miracle. There's no trick to growing daffodils in pots if one has a cool cellar. And Wayside Gardens, where I got my bulbs, said it can also be grown in bowls, like the paper whites. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, The Joy of Botanical Drawing by Wendy Hollander. This book came out in 2020. I think it's sensational. And the subtitle is A Step-by-Step Guide to Drawing and Painting Flowers, Leaves, Fruit, and More. In this book, Wendy shows you how to achieve amazingly realistic and vibrant botanical illustrations. From flowers so dazzling, you feel as if you might be able to smell them, to tomatoes that look as if they've just been picked from the garden. Known for her incredible botanical illustrations, Wendy shares her honed techniques through little lessons that build as your skills grow. Using colored pencils and watercolor pencils, Wendy specifically shows you how to draw a spiraling pine cone, a spiky chestnut, a fuchsia-tinted radish, a graceful morning glory, and many more. Wendy writes, I first learned botanical illustration techniques 20 years ago. The moment I understood these techniques, a door opened for me, and I immediately fell in love with the practice of botanical drawing. And since that day, it feels like the plants are leading me along a path that I steadily follow. This book is 192 pages of inspiring botanical illustration. It's a how-to from an artist that practices with botanical subjects every single day. You can get a copy of The Joy of Botanical Drawing by Wendy Hollander and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $17. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. Today is National Seed Swap Day. It's the first one we've had during a global pandemic. This year, instead of a traditional in-person seed swap, many of us are going to need to consider sending seeds in the mail or drop them on the porch of a dear garden friend. 
Earlier last summer, I saw an excellent idea. A woman decided to transform her little free book library you know, those little boxes on a post where you can drop off a book and take a book. Well, she changed that into a little place where you can swap out seeds. This year, if you have any leftover seed after planting or when your flowers are producing seed, you can always share them in a little seed library or with a garden friend or a neighbor or you can even share them with people you don't know, thanks to apps like Nextdoor. And if you feel so inclined, consider building a little seed library for your front yard. I think it's such a sweet idea. I love the idea of little seed libraries popping up all over the country. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember... For a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced in lovely Wyoming, Minnesota, with the help of Paige Mance, Brooke Beerbaum, Kiana Raley, Maddie Doyle, Natalie Decker, and Eric Begay. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media. You can follow the show on Instagram, and listeners always have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for the show. Just search for Daily Gardener Community the next time you're on Facebook and request to join. All the stories and books that are featured on the show can be found over at thedailygardener.org, thedailygardener.org. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for my free Friday newsletter. Last but not least, you can share your own gardener greetings on the show by emailing me at jennifer at thedailygardener.org. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and as always, have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.